Hi, I'm Dr. James Miller. Welcome to the Philosophy of Religion. In this course, we'll explore issues surrounding the nature of world religions, arguments for and against the existence of God, the implication of religion for ethics and science, and some approaches for experiencing the mystery of the divine. You may come to the subject of religion from your own religious viewpoint, or you may approach the topic as a skeptic. Regardless, the philosophical exploration of religion will challenge us to hone our skills of inquiry and analysis, while hopefully opening up a sense of curiosity and wonder to the human inclination to seek a creator or a transcendent experience of the supernatural. Explore the topic to deepen your faith or to test your doubt. Either one is a great place to start. So welcome to the philosophy of religion. Today we're going to try to do something more difficult than it sounds. We're going to try to define religion. There are a number of different groups out there that we immediately identify as a religion. Christianity is a religion. Buddhism is a religion. Islam is a religion. But when you try to distill a common definition that applies to all of them, you suddenly realize that no definition encompasses everything that we want to call religion. For instance, some people will immediately say, well, religion is the worship of gods. Buddhism actually rejects that. The Buddha claims, Siddhartha Gautama claimed, that if there are gods, they too should be surpassed. So it isn't fundamentally just a belief in gods. Some people want to call secular humanism, which is a rejection of gods, a religion. If that's the case, religion can't simply be a worship of gods. Perhaps religion is a system that gives meaning and purpose to one's life. Well, most atheists would reject that entirely because most atheists would say that they have meaning and purpose in their life, but they're not religious. When we try to distill a common definition of religion, we're going to find it's really difficult to do. The term religion or the concept of religion has changed throughout history. It's not today what was originally intended by the term religio in the ancient Roman context. The Latin word religio is the source of our word religion. When the Romans used the term religio, they were referring to sanctioned behaviors that were seen to be socially acceptable, such as offering sacrifices to public temples that were endorsed by the state. Religio was seen to be in contrast with superstitio, which was a term that was used for all the cult practices of the ancient world. There were religious groups that were not sanctioned by the Roman Empire, and they had all kinds of strange worship rituals, but they were termed superstitio by the Romans. For instance, when Christianity first developed as a minor religious sect within the Roman Empire, the Romans branded that superstitio instead of religio, because it wasn't until Constantine that Christianity was seen to be a viable religion within the Roman Empire. Today, the term religion would encompass both what the Romans intended by religio and what the Romans intended by superstitio. We use the term religion today both to talk about mainstream religious behaviors that are widely recognized and practiced, and also strange little cult-like behaviors that most people think are uh, offbeat or not mainstream. The man credited with being the founder of cultural anthropology was a guy named E.B. Tyler. In the 19th century, he was writing about the origins of religion. Darwin's Origin of the Species was published in 1859, and that said you could trace all living species back to a, an origin, back to a single root. Well, sociologists in the late 19th century and early 20th century began to explore the possibility that there was an early religious thread that gave birth to all the other religions, that in the same way evolution could be applied to species, uh, so there was some sort of evolutionary train that could be traced from the, all the variety of modern religions back to a common source. E.B. Tyler would say this common source was animism, the belief that there are spirits living in things like trees and animals and in nature. He said that animism then led to a kind of polytheism, a worship of all different kinds of spirits, which eventually in some cultures led to a monotheistic culture in which they believed there was only one god or one supreme god. E.B. Tyler would define religion minimally as a belief in supernatural beings. However, we've already seen that this is insufficient to account for things like Buddhism, which does not pursue supernatural beings. In the 1890s, there was a move towards deconstruction, which would lead towards the existentialists of the 20th century. Sociologists of the time were analyzing religion to dispel some of the supernatural beliefs that the common public held. Marx had already declared that religion was the opiate of the masses. Freud was living at the time and was declaring that religion was a crutch for the weak. And Nietzsche was 
about to pass away, he passed away in the year 1900, he was the one who declared that God was dead and we, we were the ones who had killed him. Meaning that Western society was about to remove the underpinnings of theology, leaving us in a position where we had to reevaluate our morality. At that time, one sociologist who was writing about religion was Emile Durkheim. Durkheim defined religion this way. He said, religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. That is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Beliefs and practices which unite in one single moral community called the church. All those who adhere to them. Sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden, had become a focus of study in that era. Because as they attempted to dispel the supernatural, they honed in on the question of why human beings had developed systems in which certain things were allowed and certain things were not allowed. Michel Foucault would take this and apply it to the area of sexuality in his introduction to sexuality. Uh, he would say that a lot of the concepts surrounding the forbidden in sexuality were simply social constructs designed to control populations. And thus the attempt to define religion progressed away from a simple focus on supernatural beings towards a question of what's going on sociologically when people believe in things and unite around those beliefs. In your standard Religion 101 class offered in the universities today, every professor will stand up and say religion cannot be defined. Well, that all depends on your definition of definition. If a definition is a single identification that applies across the category, then they're right. You can't define religion. But if a definition is a group of family characteristics, some of which must be shared by every element within the set, then you can define religion by naming a group of qualities, some of which each religion borrows from. For instance, the commonly identified family of characteristics that are used in definitions of religion include a belief in God or gods, morality, and a moral code that should apply to all human beings. A sense of purpose or meaning, a definition of what human life is for, how we are to live and what our goals are. A belief in the supernatural, such as a belief in miracles and healings or supernatural beings like angels. Promises about the afterlife or about the end of the world. Transcendent experiences in which one has a, an encounter with a divine presence that one believes to be beyond the mere physicality of nature. The categories of sacred and profane, and certain prohibitions of behaviors and practices, and certain affirmations of other behaviors and practices. And finally, a community in which people gather to share these practices, and to share these common beliefs, and to attempt to propagate these beliefs. If, if you take all of these characteristics as indicative of religious behavior, then by and large we can analyze any religious system and name, yes, this one probably qualifies as a religion because it contains enough of the char family characteristics, the family resemblances that often define religions, or no, this one doesn't. Of course, when we try to define religion or anything else, there are always going to be gray areas. There will always be some that don't quite fit into the category, but maybe mostly fit into the category. And that's just the difficulty of academic work. We might want to say that the word religion itself and the attempt to define it is merely an academic exercise that doesn't really apply to the practice of religion. For instance, ancient philosophers were the ones who asked questions about life and what life was for and where life was going. But they also asked questions about the earth and what it was made of and mathematics and how it worked. As society and the academy progressed, eventually philosophy would be broken into subcategories. You can really go back to Isaac Newton and see a distinction between the practice of the sciences and the practice of religion, though Newton was a very religious scientist. Thereafter, the term natural philosopher, which had meant philosophers who studied the nature of being, came to be known as scientists. And of course, scientists would be broken into further subcategories, physicists, chemists, biologists, and so forth. Meanwhile, mathematicians broke off as a, in another independent category in the academic fields. Eventually, religious studies became a grouping that was seen to be different than the others. I think that might be a mistake. The word religion really might just mean worldview, the encompassing view with which we summarize what life is all about. 
And it's very hard to distinguish that from what we believe about science, math, literature, and everything else. Religion might just be a meta-category that says, here's the lens by which I choose to interpret the meaning of my life. So, at the end of the day, that probably isn't much help. I haven't exactly defined religion, but perhaps I've helped us ask more clearly what religion is.